TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good on the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Intervention. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest intervention news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Intervention! Hey everybody, welcome to Intervention, Season 11, Episode 7. This is Luke and Chantal's episode. It's you and me. Put your headset back on, dude. Are you going to do it that way? <laughs> no, uh, nobody can see it, it but if you... Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm Tamara Berg, and I'm here with Michelle Macedo. We've got Ben Bottomley running the board for us tonight. And uh, let's just dive right in. Luke and Chantel. Chantel from Ontario, Canada. Hot messes. They, uh, they had Canadian yeah. accents. Yes. Yeah, maybe pull that out. There you go. Yeah. Um, 18 years old and already been addicted for three years. That is really, really sad. It's, I, I, I mean, it, it's just, it's so extreme, right? Didn't, didn't she start using, did, did they say she's already was on like other well, drugs? Well, she was taking Ritalin when she was eight, which we'll get to when, um... we, when we go into her story a little bit. But she started using the Oxycontin when she was 13. Mm. And, uh... She smokes it and snorts it. Those are her preferred methods, as opposed to just taking a pill because it gets her higher faster. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Can't just take it. Can't yeah. just take it with water. And takes up to 20 pills a day. That is, I don't understand how these people, how her stomach is okay. Like she's never had to oh, get yeah. it pumped or uh-huh. something. Uh-huh. Because, you know, when people try and kill themselves, they take a bunch of pills. Right. So I would think that. You know, the body would just reject everything and freak out, but maybe it's not. Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, her, not her stepdad, but her mom's uh, boyfriend was talking about how it doesn't matter how young you are, you know that there's still some damage going on. Because a young body is very resilient and do can do many things, but, uh, you know, there, there are definitely some still some things going on with her. So uh, she likes it because it makes her numb because she feels no pain. She feels nothing. Um, and, you know, I guess we can just go right into this, you know, that she's, uh, she was diagnosed with ADHD when she was eight years old. Her mom knew she was different. She couldn't, uh, she couldn't pay attention to things. She couldn't concentrate. Exactly. And, uh, and was, was, uh, prone to rages and, uh, you know, and then they put her on Ritalin right away, which, you know, for her was great, but then had the side effects. Yeah. Of depression, I don't know if there was another option or anything, right? But I do know that almost the majority of of my friends mm-hmm. and from high school mm-hmm. are all taking Ritalin. Really, it's it's like a it's a thing. It's a thing that a lot of people at least take for a little while, right? Well, and she seemed to have a really extreme case, didn't, don't you think? By what they were saying, yeah, the rages, yeah, is, that's really scary. Yeah, I don't know what you would do about that. I don't know if they took her to see a anger management person. Yeah, probably not. I mean, well, I mean, you would think that she would because she's young and and there's so many people having issues with ADHD and ADD these days. That that sort of alternative. Um, paths would be explored. And speaking of that, I had a really interesting conversation with my cousin a couple weeks ago. I was at this family family reunion and she was telling me that uh, one of her kids was having, you know, one of my cousins hurt my first cousin. So mm, mm, once removed, <laughs> uh, was having issues in school and they discovered he was a DD, I believe. And um, my, his mom, my cousin, she, she you know, was exploring lots of things because she happens to be a nurse. Mm. And she found something called, oh God, now I can't remember what it was called. Hang on. Like a medication? Um, 
No, it wasn't at all medication. It was a a, a process, a learning process for people. Mm. So it was called electro electro education, neuro education. That's ah. what it was, neuro education. And it it was a process because the ADD and ADHD brain just works differently. The mm-hmm. paths aren't the same. Their methods of learning, their methods of communication, their methods of coping, all of those things are different. It's like their brains are wired differently than other brains. And so this process um, trains the subject, the patient, to think in a different way and in a way that is more useful to them. So one of the issues that uh, her son, my first cousin once removed, <laughs> had was that he was having trouble just concentrating. Mm. And he was pretty young. He was maybe a, a preteen or, or a young teenager when mm. when he was going through this. And he, um, uh, she said that they, they had him, you know, hooked up with all the electrodes on mm. his brain. And basically had uh, him play video games and there was a pro I mean it was obviously a specific video game and there was a a process by which the um, computers hooked up to his brain were figuring out that if he strayed if his if he started daydreaming or getting off task the game would shut down (laughs) excuse me and so um there was a lot of incentive for him to think differently and sort of retrain his brain. And the doctor explained to my cousin that, you know, it seems like this is a thing that, you know, you're just sitting in here and you're doing it for an hour and it's not, um, it's not really effective. But the thing is, is that you're retraining those neural paths and hundreds of thousands of times per act that you take, or action that you take are it's rerouting those paths to help you stay focused and and be successful in how that how you think and it only takes a couple of um, sessions she said that's a really I mean, it was, good idea I never heard of anything like this and I hear a lot about that kind of stuff and I found it just completely fascinating that that's that so he was really able to just retrain his brain and um, and it was very successful now I don't know if he had kind of as severe uh, a scenario as she had. But I, I think it's really encouraging that there are things out there besides drugs because obviously for some people they don't work right. Mm-hmm. And especially some people can't get therapy and whatever, but the video game thing sounds really cool. First of all, who doesn't want to play video, play video games? games? Exactly. So uh, trying to focus and trying to stay on task is so... That's a really good idea. I know. Isn't that interesting? It's called neuroeducation. Neuroeducation. And, um, and she said, you know, it's not just something that happens in our area. There are places that do it all around. And I, I don't um, – we happen to be talking about somebody else in a different condition. And she was saying, you know, it might work for other conditions. I just know that it worked for this one. Mm. So uh, p- perhaps stress management, perhaps mm. anger management, like you're talking about. There could be lots of things that potentially it could work for. I don't know. But um, – but it would be so encouraging to actually have something that is a non-chemical cure for these people to have them help manage their their lives yeah. and their and their processes because she's so young and having such a difficult time of it. Yeah, especially if the environment makes it worse. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is so crazy Chaotic. all the time, mm-hmm. and and so then if she's being put on pills and then it just is contradicts each other mm-hmm. and then it gets stressful mm-hmm. and whatnot. So she should do the video game thing. Right, exactly. Might be a little late, but she should. Well, and one of the things that I was thinking about, the, the, the thought that came to me as they were just, as her family members were describing Chantal, and as we were kind of watching her, she almost sounded schizophrenic to me. Yeah, she sounded Didn't she? really intense. Like she had maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't just, obviously she does have ADHD. She was diagnosed with that, but maybe there was something else in there as well in addition to the drugs. Uh-oh, I'm going to sneeze. Yep. Take it, Michelle. In addition to everything, and so she, I think, um, sorry, is really. Did you do it? Did I didn't. I didn't. It, it, might it was a warning. Later. Yeah, it was, it was warning. a warning. I'll try and keep False it away. False alarm. <laughs> yeah, um, but she, she was so different. I was trying to figure it out too. Whether it was, I was thinking bipolar, yeah. or 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 something, uh, some other mental illness. Yes. Yeah, but I. I don't know. I don't know how bad H- ADHD can get and if that's the symptoms, but she's got something going on. Yeah, for sure. Obviously. For sure. And I, I felt really sad for her because she's so young and already having such big adult problems. Yeah. You know? Um, so anyway, then we meet Luke, right? 
Oh, one more thing about, I wanted to say about Chantal was she said, you know, every day is the same. I wake up, I find money, I find pills, I take pills, and then I go to sleep. And then the next morning, I go to look for money, I get money, I get pills, I take pills, and then I go to sleep. I mean, what kind of life is that? Yeah, living like that every single day. Now for how many years? What, three years. For three years, every single day. Mm -hmm. Does she go to school? Good question. Yeah. Has I, she been going to school for three years? I have no idea. They never even showed that. They didn't even show that. And it was winter and stuff, so she and would have been in school. But I can't imagine that she's doing well in school. Right. Or maybe she dropped out or something. Maybe. I she must have. She must have at least by this point. Maybe she was going yeah, to school she and must. sort of managing herself for a, for a couple of years and then she graduated or dropped out and... Yeah, oh, that's true. She could have graduated, but yeah, they didn't mention it. So yeah, that's I don't weird. know. But she's that young, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of people I knew just around the neighborhood of where I grew up, yeah. South Pass. Yeah, and so many of the kids that went to South Pass High School didn't didn't continue past sophomore year. No kidding. And and. It, there was this huge circle. I was in like a band, whatever. Right. And, and I met all of these people through the band members who went to South Pass. Mm -hmm. And, and most of them didn't go past sophomore year. That's when I didn't see them anymore. Yeah. And, and a lot of them ended up being addicted to drugs. Really? Overdosing. And at least this one girl went to rehab. Wow. And then she came back and and then all of her friends are into it, you know, into the same thing and they don't care about her, obviously. Right. So they do it and then she relapsed, but it's all really, it's, it's all like environment. If, if she's enabled, you know, yes. she was so, everyone was handing it to her. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, and if she's so Mom. fragile and is not, yeah, not set up to deal with it herself, then yeah, she needs to she she needs to figure out a different yeah. group of friends. Yes, yes, she does. Obviously, obviously, a different group of friends. I don't know what she's doing now. Um. Okay. So Luke, twenty three years old in San Francisco. He lives in San Francisco. He's in San Francisco. Duh. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Love the reaction when you first said it because I didn't even I didn't even think about. It. I was like, oh, San Francisco. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, so. He was a skateboarder. He seemed incredibly smart, didn't he? And yeah. well read. Yeah. He had a vocabulary. He knew yeah. the things that he was talking about. Going into the bookstore, mm -hmm. taking out all these books and mm -hmm. stuff that I guess he reads when he's mm -hmm. walking around being homeless. Right. Exactly. And was really smart and seemed really friendly. He was probably yeah, high. Charismatic. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, really, really charismatic and seemed like he made friends with everyone and was on relatively good terms with people. I don't, obviously, I don't know who, like, gives him the drugs, or I guess they can't really say that. Yeah. But I just wonder, I just wonder the things that she, Chantel, but mostly Luke has given up to get drugs. Right. Like, including shoes. Right. That was kind of shocking, wasn't it? I mean, because yeah. you've seen so much of the other stuff. I know, obviously, pr the prostitution and things like that is really shocking. But something so basic as I, I, I don't even have shoes. Yeah, and then he he just walks around without shoes. It's just so physically, I don't know, visually, I guess it's just he doesn't have shoes. Yeah, because he because he gave him in for drugs. For drugs, he needed it that badly. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, crack cocaine. What, what is that? What's the difference between that and cocaine? Well, I don't know exactly what the difference is, but I can tell you it's a form of cocaine that is far more addictive mm. than, than your standard Coke. Mm. Um, and, and I've heard it said many, many times that you can get addicted to crack by using it one time. One time. Why even try it? Right, exactly. Why even do it? Well, because they all say that it's the greatest high they've ever had, you yeah. know, but... No. <laughs> obviously you got to give up a lot for that but one time yeah. can get you addicted because it so scary. affects your nervous system and um his uh stepdad john talked about how he he's so smart luke was so smart and so clever and so um you know everybody had such hopes for him but now he wasn't sure if what 
his behavior, his behavioral problems are because of the drugs or if he's actually had some brain damage from it. Mm. And they said on the card that, uh, that it could actually cause brain damage. He seemed almost kind of psychotic to me. Totally. A schizophrenic and a psychotic. Totally. He seemed definitely brain damaged Mm -hmm. or something going on. Definitely not normal. Yeah. He was really something in his brain. I don't know. Reverted back to, he seemed crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, a homeless person, you know, and he's, right. he's only 23 and he's become this person. You know, one of the things I found interesting about him, he's 23. He's been addicted for five or seven years. We've got different numbers there. Uh, maybe he was using for seven years, but was really addicted mm. for five. I don't know. Um, and he had physical issues, right? So he had, he looked like he had some kind of aphasia. There was something wrong with the left side of his face. Yeah. His eye looked like maybe it, maybe he had retinal damage or something. It looked like his eye wasn't focusing on things. Yeah, so that it, it was, was. It looked odd. Yeah. Um, and then of course the cracked front tooth, which is always, you know, chick magnet I right there. Really? Yeah. That's hot. Uh, that's hot. Uh, but, but one of the things that I found really interesting was he didn't have, oh, it's not crack. It's meth that wrecks your teeth, right? Yes. Oh it's yeah. Meth that wrecks your teeth. Okay. Yeah. Does so crack too, I don't, I don't know. If crack I thought, I thought for maybe. a second it did, but I think maybe that's not the case. So, um, so, you know, yeah, he had that, that aphasia thing with his face. He had the l- missing front tooth and, uh, and he said, you know, I love crack and crack loves me. Crack loves me. Awesome. Oh, it's a beautiful relationship. Yeah, it is a beautiful relationship. Kind of like the beautiful relationship that he has with his mother. Yes, talk about that. Who follows him around. Huh? How long? For the past two months? Month? Yeah, I think it was two months. The past two mm-hmm. months, mm-hmm. his mother couldn't stand the fact that he was out on the streets because mm-hmm. his stepfather threw him out. Mm-hmm. Because he couldn't take it anymore mm-hmm. and didn't want to enable him. Right. Stepfather recovering addict himself. Alcoholic, yes. I think it was. Yes. Mm-hmm. Alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And now she moved out too and she's homeless with him. She's just wandering the streets with him. How messed up is that? That's so messed up. I mean, I know we did see er- early in our in the series, we saw uh, some mom who sp- who would spend nights on the street with her son. I remember that um, early on in the series. But... She wasn't living 24-7 on the streets with him for two months. That's so extreme. It really is. She's not even, like, I, she's sober, I'm guessing, Mm -hmm. and she's living on the streets with him Mm -hmm. for no reason other than to be around him. Yeah, how messed up do you have to be? She, she gave up her marriage, she gave up her job, and she gave up all her money to live this awesome life on the street with her addictive, addicted kid. Mm Mm-hmm. Awesome. And obviously the kid really cares about her. Yeah, exactly. Because he puts her first. Yeah. And it never ends. And I don't know if she thinks that by doing that, it will help. It Maybe, she, obviously, she feels like she's protecting him. Right. But but it will just it will just take her down. Mm-hmm. Already, it's it's gone so, mm-hmm. so low. And it's really sad. And it was in both cases, the moms were just taking care of him. Yeah. We're just well, here. and um, uh, Jeff talked about this he, in in uh, the pre-intervention with Chantal. He said, you know, given their uh, their no support, most addicts cannot do not have the resources to be mm. an addict. Mm. You know, they have to have the support system of people giving them money, a place to live, phone, transportation, whatever it is, in order to get their drugs. And that's why cutting off the support system is so critical in helping them get well. Yeah. Because without it, they, they can't do the behavior that they've that they've gotten themselves into. Yeah, especially Chantel. Chantel. Mm. But she just relies a hundred percent. She calls her mom and t- pick up some pizza. Right. Like get my groceries. Right. Do what? If I call my what? My mom would just be like, no. Right. What? Pick a pizza. No. What are you talking about? No. And she pays for that and gives her five hundred dollars a month anyway right. for living expensive and pays for her motel Phone room. and motel rooms. Yeah. Well yeah. the five hundred dollars goes toward allegedly yeah, the motel obviously. rooms and uh, phone and woo food. There it goes. Oh, hey, well, flying pen. Um, but you know, the mom said uh, every waking second is trying to figure out how I can support her. Where am I going to drive her? What am I going to get her? And you know, her her boyfriend sitting there in the in the kitchen going, 
what, 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 I thought we were having dinner. She's like, nope, got to go get Chantal, got to go get some pizza, got to go do this, got to do that. And said very readily, if I had to choose between never seeing my daughter and seeing my daughter addicted, I would pick it. Well, duh, you are. That's what yeah, you're doing. That's what you're doing. Yeah. It is you are given a choice. And yeah, we can see what and you're you choosing. And you chose, mm-hmm. you chose that. Same with Luke's mom, mm-hmm. both in the same predicament, but one of them has a home. Mm-hmm. And Chantal's uh, parents are better off, obviously. But the boyfriends are, okay, so one with Luke, it's the stepfather. Correct. And with her, it's the boyfriend right. of her mom. Right. I mean, those relationships obviously will suffer. Yes. I can't believe that they're still together, Chantal's parents. Yeah. Well, her um, her mom's boyfriend seemed like a really level-headed guy. Yeah. You know, and it was, uh, he said some very supportive, very clear, very normal stuff. And I was really happy to see that. So she's got some voice of reason in her life, but, yes. but obviously has a terrible sense of self and, and can't figure out, but you know, I mean, that's the other thing is, is they talk about how an addict can't, um, support their lifestyle. A lot of times a codependent can't figure out how to get out of it either. I mean, I'm sure you've known people like that, you know, yeah. the, the codependent people Completely. Who, who are supporting a druggie and, and, uh, and they don't know exactly how to stop the cycle mm-hmm. because they don't want to cut them off because they, uh, I could see, I could totally see why that would be really hard. Yeah. You know, and then, but then there is the other option of then them just Dying. dying is it would and dying be you, hard <laughs> yeah that maybe that might be a little tricky dying and you knowing that you were funding it right and I think Chantal's mother is the one who said I'm sick of watching my daughter die a very slow death I, I think that was yeah her. she totally um did. and you know well she she was just so she was kind of like Captain Obvious. It's <laughs> <laughs> like watching my daughter die a slow death. Well, you know, you could speed it up if you want, or you could actually like do something. Yeah, about exactly. It. Come on now, you do have choices in this, and I'm sure everyone is angry at her, like her other daughter. Oh my gosh, who Wasn't is that also that? That's so sad. That is oh so my God, sad. The fist fight and the again, we saw the rage come out. Yeah, really intensely and. Like they said, sisters fight, but it did not seem like a normal fight. Well, and this is a sister. Chantal steals her, stole her laptop. Yeah. Looked what? like she was actively like getting ready to steal her clothes. Yeah. Right there. Actually yeah. grabbing them. Yeah. And she was obviously her sister. What was her name? Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie mm-hmm. was like, oh, she's going to, she wants to steal my clothes while she's like taking stuff out of the closet in the yep. background. Would she want to sell that? Or something. Maybe, yeah. Or does she just want to wear it? I don't. I don't know. You I know, don't know. It could be either one. I can't imagine you can get a lot of money on the streets for clothes, though. Yeah, that's yeah. So. That's what I was thinking. So probably to wear it because I was like, that's a sister thing. Yeah. Laptop, not a sister thing. Yeah, exactly. And while that fight was happening, we see, and oh, it was at like Nana's birthday party or something oh, was what yeah. it was happening. Here's the show for this, <laughs> for the party. We have a little, sti- little stage show for you. <laughs> um, N- Nana was sitting there with her hands over the little girl's ear. And I'm not sure who that little girl was because they really only talked about, there were lots of younger girls in the, mm. in the room. I don't know if they were cousins or sisters or, or what, but just sitting there and that poor little girl kind of had this awkward smile on her face. Nana's covering her ears so she can't hear the screaming, yelling, and swearing going on. Mm-hmm. But she, when she's sat down with them, she looked freaked out, obviously. And that mm-hmm. was so sad because mm-hmm. you know that she's going to be on that next, on the next intervention, you know, five yep. years from now. Yep. Talking about that. Yep. Talking about her older sister. Exactly. And, and obviously Chantel doesn't care about that. Right. But there was someone sitting on the bed in her sister's room. Like another girl. Yeah. There's a lot of like random girls that yeah. I guess she's related to. It seems like their family is really big. Yes. So Well, she, I think she did say in the beginning, I have a really big, really wonderful family or something like that. Yeah, so and maybe they, they all were... were just saying great things about her. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning, it didn't even seem like she had a problem. It didn't, did it? It was weird. It was, it was like she was going to say, and now I'm sober. Right. And... I don't know what the episode's about. I don't know. Right, right, right. Like, exactly. I did not understand that. She seemed totally fine. She did. She really did. That was really scary. 
I, we can get to, back to her again when, in the end, but I have more to say about that. Mm. Um, so at some point, Luke and his mom go to see the stepdad, John, mm. and ask if he if they can stay, and he says no, and he says I don't want to be part of the game. I'm not, you know, and he and he's trying because he's been through it himself. He's clearly trying to uh, work the process, you know, and do it right. But he's there's kind of a disconnect. There's there's things that he's not really being honest about I think yeah would you agree with yes and communicating about because watching it it's not the same as Chantel's mom saying I just can't I can't do this anymore right I can't enable you I can't keep funding you different from what his situation was Mm -hmm. because he was saying no but he I think obviously he had some apologizing to do mm-hmm. that he didn't want to do mm-hmm. or wasn't doing, mm-hmm. obviously, and has made mistakes mm-hmm. before, mm-hmm. wasn't taking responsibility for that. Yeah. Even though he went to rehab. So you yeah. think that he's going to... But it might it might be so long ago that he's forgotten <laughs> some of the process. Yeah, totally. Because anyway, she says, you know, we'd like to stay here tonight. He says no, and then gives him money to go stay in a motel. Yeah, I know. I was going to say... But again, that speaks back to my point of sometimes you know what you're supposed to do, but don't know the whole story, like how to how to continue with holding your bottom line and, you know, making sure there are consequences and all that kind of stuff, which is why we have intervention. Yeah. Ah, yes. I didn't understand how he wouldn't try... To, I don't know. It feels like because he had that problem, yeah. I would think that he would think... Uh, I wonder what the root of this is and uh, the pain that he's going through. I mean, I don't know how much he did and talked to John, I mean, Luke, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. It seemed really disconnected Mm -hmm. and it seemed like he should just apologize. Well, one of the things that I found to be an interesting statement when Luke was talking about his life. So his birth, his birth father left when he was six months old. Mm. And then, he, and and then the statement was that he made was uh, something about my family felt very disconnected or I felt very separated. Oh no, he said my my family was not felt very unstable. Mm. And then at two years old, his mom married John, mm. and and John talked about what joy they had. They had a sec- he had John had a second childhood and they had this great life and everything was really great. So what I thought was weird was Luke saying. My life felt really unstable. What, from six to six months to two years old? Your yeah. life, really, really, how do you know that when that's you're so old? That's true. But I maybe he was about talking that. about, old, you know, older. Because, um, you know, obviously Looking his, his memory's it. kind of funny. But yeah, six um, months old, I don't. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. Maybe but he feels like that now. I Probably. Probably. Because his life from, what was it, age nine. John became an alcoholic. So from maybe two to nine, things were hunky dory. And then from nine to however old he was when he got addicted in his teens. That must have been scary. And obviously not a good role model. Right. And any, any age is super damaging. Yeah. But really, you know, nine to. Yeah. So impressionable. It's, it's, right. Yeah. It's just, I could see how that would really screw with someone's head. And then after John got clean, he didn't apologize. To Luke, and Luke said, and that killed me. And so then, you know, that that comes a little bit later. So we're at the uh, the pre-intervention between Rod, the Rod Esposito. Yeah, he's cool. He's so cool. He's hip and with it. Luke walks in the door. <laughs> Hi, I'm an interventionist. My name's Rod. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Puts it right okay. on the table. Yep. But uh, but Rod had said in the pre-intervention, uh, you have to tell Luke, I love you. And John starts crying. Yeah. And then says to Luke's mom, this is the worst case of codependency I've ever seen. Now, he has seen a lot of cases of codependency. He said he's been working in interventionists uh, for 22 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. And and codependency, I can imagine with relationships and, Mm -hmm. but that is really, really severe. Mm -hmm. She is living with him on the street. Right. But you're the one who said it. You, You know, she gave up he made her live on the street she gave up her whole life in order to do that living on the street can you imagine no i would never do that not for a second 
No. I, I really can't for a, for a second. I yeah. can't imagine it. I don't know what it's like to have a kid. Right. But. Right. He's making that choice of his own free will. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean she has to make that choice. Yeah. Obviously, she's she's really protective and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I, that's just she's just not she's just not taking care of herself at all. Not remotely. She's literally giving everything up for her kid. Uh, and she directly gives him money. Yep. He remembered I, during the episode he was sitting on the fountain or something mm -hmm. and yelling at his mom. Yeah. For not getting money. He didn't smoke in, in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And he was being so rude to her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's the only person you have. Right. That's the only person that you still talk to. Right. And that's actually there for you. Yep. And she gives you money, which right. is so bad. But what? He's like getting mad at the one person that he has. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the drugs talking. I know. And it's just so... Obviously, it's probably the drugs talking when he's all happy and he's the, most, the friendliest guy in the world and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But he does seem psychotic. Yeah. N something's not right up there. Yeah. Some screws came loose. Poor guy. Yes. So then we go into the intervention. And again, you know, Rob, hi, I'm Rob. I'm an interventionist. <laughs> um, and, you know, Luke was like game right from the start. I mean, I, I you know, I'm always, it's that moment. I put so much, um, you know, heart into that moment because you don't know what's going to happen yeah. and he's like shaking his hand sits down on the couch and goes you know all right let's <laughs> he's ready to go <laughs> exactly exactly he was he was ready for it mm -hmm. and i thought if you sleep on the streets how it must be nice to go into a room and, and sit on a couch and and i saw him drinking that energy drink rock star or whatever it yeah, was. yeah. Mm -hmm. and he probably never gets to do that mm -hmm. so he's downing it mm -hmm. and yeah here his family is mm -hmm. and his sister is there mm -hmm. and yeah i think he's he's totally willing obviously right uh but we had a little bit of a moment because we had uh john start reading his letter and he just starts blank right off the bat says i'm sorry which made me cry immediately. Oh, I was totally <laughs> yeah. crying. Yeah. yeah. It was just, I couldn't even, it was so heart-wrenching. He said, I'm sorry and I love you. And it's like, that's all you needed to say ever. Just what took that long. Yep. That's all you needed to say. Yep. And, and then Luke was ready, ready to go. Yeah. I feel like at that moment, it was fine. Yeah. And then I know that when his mom was talking, oh that's a whole yeah. Other thing. But it just seemed like that changed everything. Yeah. That changed everything. It really did. I mean, that was what he needed to hear. Because he, sa he said earlier in the episode, I had no faith. I have no hope. You know, the drugs have taken everything from me. And and he just, you know, it's what we all want. Just wanted to be loved. Mm -hmm. And he didn't respect himself. And he just said he stopped caring about himself. Yeah. Because his dad didn't care about him. Right. So why should I care? Especially if you go from, oh, loving dad, everything's yeah. great and happy. And then like monster dad mm -hmm. who's drunk all the time and, and verbally abusive and probably hit him and stuff like that. And, and that must be super confusing. Yes. And he probably was really angry and then he got sober and then John was like, okay, I'm sober now. Bye-bye. Yeah. Which is great for you. Right. But you know, making amends. Yeah. There's a little maintenance that goes on there. Yeah, exactly. Like we know from Celebrity Rehab. Yes, we do. You got you to gotta get back on the wagon. <laughs> you got to talk to those people. That's right. You have to say you're sorry. Yeah. Cause well, it was so powerful. I mean, it's just amazing to me how people will be, especially in this kind of situation, so prideful about saying I love you and saying I'm sorry. And if they could only see... The, the moments like this where if you can just have the courage yourself to say those words there's Luke leaning on his dad crying his eyes out because he'd finally heard what he'd been wanting to hear for 13 years 14 years it was so powerful yeah, yeah. I can't even thinking about it is yeah gonna make me start to I know me too <laughs> and then, you know right there he says I'll do it I'm sorry and then oh he was apologizing Luke himself was apologizing I'm sorry dad oh, I'm so I sorry know. oh my 
my God, that was just so heart wrenching again. And Luke was losing it. Yeah. He was losing it from the very beginning. Yeah. And when John started talking. Yep. So I knew that when John said it, I just thought that John's letter would be really long and, yeah. <laughs> and long winded until he got to the point, which right? was just yeah. like two sentences long. Yep. And it I was, love you. I'm sorry. I didn't do it right. And that's all he needed to say. Yeah. That's all he needed to say. Phew. And then, oh, and then a flashback to. Yeah. Th- then we have Chantal. Mm. Who has just this giant attitude. She walks in and is talking about how rude everyone's being to her. <laughs> that was the best. That was oh, the best. It's so rude, you people. Like, it's not fair. <laughs> I mean, she's but, 18, right? Yeah. yeah she's 18, uh-huh. but acting, obviously, you know, we talk about how they regress to the moment that the abuse happened, the drugs happened, whatever. And she was acting like a, you know, 10 year old stomping her feet. It's not fair. You people are rude. Yelling at everybody. She just, and right away, I think she saw everything and saw her whole family, mm-hmm. knew what was mm-hmm. going on. And right off the bat, this is so rude. Mm-hmm. So rude. Mm-hmm. She was outraged by how rude it was yeah. that everyone was there. And it's the exact opposite of rude yeah. is the thing what? that's so <laughs> ironic about it. And she kept saying, well, I have to go now. Like, it's inconvenient for her to go now. Right. What, you've so, got some place you need to be? Yeah, exactly. So, but this was interesting because uh, Jeff took a different tack than he normally does. He, first of all, didn't say they love you like crazy. I he know. didn't give my ca- my catchphrase that I love Maybe he heard. Jeff. Maybe he, he heard. He may have heard from us <laughs> or <laughs> other people anyway. Um, she says no. And he says, can I talk to you one-on-one in the other room? And he wants to know what her considerations are, basically. You know, what's, why are you saying no? Have you seen, have you seen people take them into the other room? Mm -mm. I haven't, actually. that's a new thing. The only time I've seen it happen is when the druggie runs out of the room and someone has to chase after them and continue talking to them. That's the only time I've seen sort of a one-on-one, but I haven't seen this, like, private conference in the other room thing. Um, so that was really interesting and, and he's so, he's so funny to me cause he's so folksy and he goes, <laughs> he, he's talking to her, finds out what her considerations are, you know, what her conditions are. And he goes, all right, let me take a run at this, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and you know, talks to, talks to her family again, talks to her. And then they say, you have two choices. Basically you can go to rehab or you can go to jail. I love how. I totally forgot about that information. Mm-hmm. Me too. And, you know, earlier it was just a slide on the screen. Yes. She robbed. She a robbed a restaurant. Restaurant. Mm-hmm. And that was surprising. But love how they can use that against her now. Yep. Because Great bargaining she chip. probably would have just chosen, no, I'm going to continue yeah. being an addict and being addicted and whatever. Mm-hmm. But... The other option was prison. Mm-hmm. Such a good alternative. It is, because you can't really, not as easily, get drugs in prison. They're really rude in prison. They are so rude. <laughs> I don't think she'll be <laughs> able to deal with it. They're, they're really rude. Oh, my God. And, they, and you have to do things right now in prison, too. Yeah. Yeah, they make a good But all she wants right to do now. is hang out with her friends. Yeah. And she wants a pill. Uh-huh. Or 20. Yeah. <laughs> or 20. Um, so, <laughs> and we go and see, totally. uh, Chantal <laughs> going to rehab and they say to her, uh, she needs life skills. She does. Cause she's, first of all, I have a firm, firm belief that home ec should be taught in school to high school kids. My sister used to be a home ec teacher until they cut the program. Uh, And she was incredibly awesome because, you know, most of the time when you think home ec, you go, oh, they learn how to bake cakes and make aprons. And it's not. I mean, when my sister was teaching it, it was life skills. It was how to write a check, how to pump gas in a car, how to fill out a job application how to uh, manage conflict, how to talk to people, how to shake a hand, you know, things that you need to know to get further in life, how to do laundry. Yeah, they should have that. Uh, Proper nutrition, like that you need protein with your carbs, you know, that you do need to eat leafy green vegetables and, you know, Mm. what what happens to your... So anyway, those are the kinds of things that my my sister used to teach, as I said, before the Home Ec uh, program got cut. And, um, And it's something that's really missing 
from kids' curriculum these days because parents are working so hard, they're often not there to be able to help teach them. And you know, this clearly is one of those cases as well. She needed life skills. She's, she doesn't know how to cope with her anger. She's got these issues with the uh, ADHD drug as well as Oxy the illegal cotton. drugs yeah. and doesn't know how to deal with it. Yeah, I don't understand how, I mean, everyone has been doing everything for her. Yep. And home ec classes probably would have been very useful right about mm-hmm. now. Because she, I doubt she can even cook anything for herself. Right. To eat. Uh, apparently she just calls her mom. Yeah. Her mom brings her over pizza. Yeah. Whatever she wants. Uh, so they said that she, so she went to treatment, left after, was it two weeks? It was all going so fast yeah. I didn't have time to yeah. write the notes. But I think it says after two weeks she was using, is still using. But didn't they say her mom's holding her bottom line? Did they yeah. say that? Her mom still do- won't see her. Right. And mom went to uh, the, codependency yeah. family treatment. Yes. Right? Good thing. They offered yeah. both of the moms that. Yeah. Yes. Thank God. The moms had way issues too. Mm-hmm. So many ish- codependency stuff, taking care of them. Mm-hmm. Not their responsibility. So they, the moms went, uh, Chantel didn't exactly stay, No, which is sad. Really sad. Really sad. She seems like she puts up a temper tantrum if things don't right. go her way. Right. So she probably didn't like it. Because they told her what to do. Because they told her what to do. They and were it, rude. They didn't give her pills. <laughs> they were so rude. They probably, the food wasn't as good as pizza. She wanted everyone to do everything for her. She couldn't take her sister's clothes. Right. It was so inconvenient that they needed to leave right then. All she wants to do is sit in a room with her friends. For an hour. For an hour. Or take a pill. And you know when Jeff was the interventionist for this, I think, but when the person said, okay, let me just take one more hit of heroin. Yeah. And then, and then take me to the plane. Yeah. And then they did. Yeah. Like, how do they decide what is what is reasonable right. and what's not. Right. Because I thought maybe they were going to say, okay, we'll get one more pill or right. something. Right. But uh, they just but know. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, sometimes they do, though. And I don't know if it might be uh, some of the drugs that are harder to get off of that have more uh, nasty physical withdrawal symptoms, that sometimes that's when they let them do them before. Mm. You know, because getting on a plane, you know, puking all over the plane because you're going through a withdrawal from methadone or heroin. Yeah, could, getting on the plane. It might be a better idea to just let them have another hit of heroin. And yeah. That could be their last. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let the rehab. Um, but I've seen them, you know, smoking, smoking heroin in the back of the van at the airport <laughs> on the show. It's hap- I've seen it many times. That is so like, crazy. And it's amazing because they're sitting there, you know, with their foil and their lighter and their s- straw, uh, smoking the heroin and going um, and and crying about it because it's their, they know it's their last hit of heroin and going through that, that um, grief and loss of their best friend because yeah. it has been their best friend and their own, the thing that's consumed their life for so many years. They, it loves them. And they love it. They love it. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's going to be just fine without them. Yeah. Which is a heartbreaking part because they will die if they keep taking these drugs. Yeah. And both of them have really, all drugs have really severe consequences and they're both so young. There was, um, for, for him, they said strokes and stuff. Yeah. So that made me think maybe something happened in his head. Right. With the, right. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so let's, let's talk about Luke. Let's end on a happy note, right? So he goes to rehab. They, they put the camera on his face. He's wearing his glasses and we both were like, oh my God, he didn't didn't get his tooth fixed, but yeah. yeah. But I mean, he looked almost like, like a different person. Yeah. I did not realize at first when it flashed on the screen, I was like, who's that? Was a dude with glasses? (laughs) Him. It was him. And he was wearing Something totally different. Yep. Had glasses on. Yep. You could see his hair because he was wearing a hat almost the whole time. Yeah. Before. Yeah. And he, he gained weight. Yep. And totally different person. Mm-hmm. Then they said he uh, transferred to another mm-hmm. facility or something. Yep. And, and was at the beach and was out and was like doing okay and looked really good and seemed happy. Mm-hmm. And whatever he's going to do about his tooth. Yeah. I'm sure someone will help him out. I'm sure they will. I'm um, sure they will. But 
it w- that was that was a really positive note. It was. It was so encouraging. Yeah. Um, and the, the, you know, he was saying, I'm so much happier now and you could just see it. And that, that thing in his face and yeah. his eye was like cleared up, it's right? It's weird. It's a life. It's yeah. like life. Like a, a reason. But he actually even looked better when the night he arrived at rehab. Oh, He yeah. already looked better. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He was walking in. Yeah. He did look better. It was, he, he's pretty amazing. And, um. And, you know, knew, knew that he needed to live a life separate from his mother. That was one of the things that they talked about in the rehab facility. Um, that he needed to figure out who he was, you know, in in relationship to his, his mother as opposed to being tied at the hip with his mother. Yeah. Living on the streets with his mother. That's not healthy. Um, and then the thing that I thought was most surprising was they said at the end, he has been sober 72 days. Actually now it's longer, I think, cause maybe it's longer because I can't do the days from April 5th. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's now back in San Francisco and living with his mom and dad. Oh, so yeah. mom and dad got back together again. Yes. I'm yes. Finally. Wasn't that just great? Yes. Because he was a lot of the reason that they broke up, I'm sure, mm-hmm. plus a bunch of yep. other issues. Yep. But now at least they're trying to work it out. Yep. And she's having her own life. And, and her she own went relationship. she completed her program, her codependency program. Yes. Yes. And there they are back. And there they are. Together. Happy again. Everyone's sober in the yep. house. Yep. Hopefully. If John doesn't stay sober, kick him out. That's right. Kick him out of the we house. Know the rules of this house. Exactly. Now that we all have been through all the programs, we know how it goes. Exactly. And it just relapse. Come back in when you're sober. Right. Exactly. Happy family. Happy story for them. And hopefully her mom, Chantel's mom, won't fund her anymore. So so Ho- Chantel won't have any more excuses eventually. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, so why don't we go to commercial and uh, then we'll talk a little more after that. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. Television and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? Uh, the wig! The wig oh, will come out that way. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. So, uh, normally with the After Buzz shows, we do predictions now, as that was the prediction of music, but it, this is an impossible show to do predictions on, really. I mean, other than, say, I think that uh, we kind of did it with, with these guys already. Luke, I think Luke's going to be fine, and I think Chantel's got a hard road in front of her. Yeah, definitely, unless she gets help. Otherwise, she'll use, we all know, the roads of... Uh, Funding your addiction, mm-hmm. uh, especially for girls. Mm-hmm. So hope she doesn't go down that way. But it's her choice, and those are all the predictions. Yeah, I, I mean, the only other thing that I could say about her is I think it's extremely likely that she's going to jail. Yeah, you know, she's got a court date. She's still using drugs. I don't think her family's going to support her in that. So she's probably going to go to jail. And that's so. That's if she left the two weeks it. into it, she probably went to jail, right? Maybe I don't know. I, I don't know, but they, I mean, they didn't they talk about said, that, yeah. but, um, if not, she's going to commit another crime if her mom's not supporting her. So yeah. she's going to be going to jail eventually. Yeah. So, uh, we also did not see it coming up for, oh, I know because two, the next two weeks are repeats. Oh. So our next show is in one, two, three weeks. So oh. we'll have to, we'll have to, um, survive on, uh, celebrity rehab, celebrity rehab and some reruns. Um, but I think that's pretty much all we've got, all we've got going here. Anything mm. else you need to say about, uh, about the old intervention? No. Ready for the next intervention? I think so. I think I am. So, uh, thanks for joining us with intervention and we will see you in three weeks. See you in three for weeks. For a new episode. Looking forward to it. Let's see some Ooh. people get healthy. Yeah.
From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.